The pigeons, the pigeons are definitely a thing here. They're everywhere. College pigeons. Chest. <laughs> Chest. <laughs> We're Greg and Hillary, the Kinetic Kinnons, and earlier this year we set out on this huge mission to pursue the dreams on our bucket list. But actually, it's kind of turned into this whole other thing, an experiment of attempting to live a meaningful life and documenting all of it, including the daily nuances and all of the weird moments along the way to those big dreams. Monday appears to be a much better day to go to the market. There's like no one here compared to just the other day when we were here on a Saturday, it was slam. We are gonna get into how Poland is not what we expected because there are some pretty big differences between our expectations and reality. But first, we need gloves. Poland is cold. As we're entering the market, I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if they had something that you could put on your feet that was kind of like foot mittens because all I brought is sandals and my feet are cold and then I thought foot mittens that's a really good idea and then I thought socks you're embarrassing it's a you're really good idea this is two dollars it's definitely a bargain Ten. Nine sloty, slotswati. What do you say? What is it? Swelta. Swelta. Nine swelta. Definitely worth not having frost nipped fingers. My fingers are frozen. We're now ready to take on Poland. We got the cheapest <laughs> gloves we could find, and there's no stopping us now. One kilo. Proszę. I don't know, these just look good. Do we know when we're gonna eat cherry tomatoes? Maybe with our plums, with our gloves on. <laughs> you get one piece of the small one here with the orange. Okay, thank you. We've got our eggs, we've got our sausage, we've got our mittens. Uh, tomatoes. <laughs> a lot of tomatoes and a kilo of plums. We are set for the week. I love the market here. Also, I love that they give you sausage or meats and butcher paper. It's just the simple things in life, you know? Crossing the road in Poland is much more enjoyable than crossing the road in Vietnam. Am I right? Oh, yeah. That was, that was not fun at all. No. So, I mean, it is like kind of cute the first time. Oh wow, there's motorbikes like everywhere. I'm dodging cars and I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Will but. I live or not? <laughs> A quick precursor on expectations and how we approach it, and I think that'll help explain. It'll help explain everything. Yeah, you guys have all seen those memes or things online that are like Instagram versus reality, or expectations versus reality, and they usually revolve around traveling yeah. my life be like Ooh, yeah. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh. <laughs> now it's normal to have a certain amount of expectations when we travel or just really in life yeah. in general a certain level of expectations is obvious if you had no expectations you would never really want to do anything as expectations are often linked to like hopes and wants and desires but after doing a little research, it seems like there are basically three different outcomes when you have expectations. Either your expectations are not met, your expectations are met, or your expectations are exceeded. And in two of the three of those, um, which is 66%, you're left wanting more. You feel like if your expectations are not met, obviously you're disappointed. If your expectations are met, you're left neutral and not like you have achieved or reached happiness. Yeah. And then obviously if your expectations are exceeded, you're happy, but in only one of three outcomes do you really experience happiness. And that's really the epitome of why we try to approach places and things and trips without setting up too many expectations. And I feel like what that's done for us is allow us to be fully present and also be open-minded to every new place we visit. These pigeons reminded me of a story 
of the time we saw the strangest, um, this is a little bit of hyperbole, but strangest abduction <laughs> ever. And it happened in Mexico. We'll save that brief story for like the bonus footage of today's video because it was, it was wild. Lunch is served. I got two egg salad sandwiches because I'm really hungry, but they're only around a dollar each, so about to be full of egg salad. Every day when we walk through the planty, I see like leaves falling, so I'm gonna reenact it for you guys because every time it happens, I think it looks like a movie. Are you ready? Wow. Boy, that one fell a little fast because it was a little bigger. You think this is an Oscar <laughs> nominated movie? <laughs> Let me try again. And the Oscar goes to. I mean, look at that. It's like picture perfect in here. And I know that there are going to be no leaves falling when we want them to fall, but trust me, when a little gust of wind comes, I feel like it's like. I love how much. Oh! Or really, I love how little it takes to impress you. It makes my job pretty easy as a husband, you know? Like Hillary, I myself am pretty easily pleased. I mean, you guys have seen it on camera. We genuinely love almost every piece of food we try. Yeah. Minus durian fruit. No. No. Oh. <laughs> but, I, truth be told, I expected to like Poland. I knew Poland was better than most people give it credit for. I knew Poland was better than the recognition it gets on the world stage. Yeah. I did not expect to love Poland. And I think I think traveling is a lot like dating. Ask me why. Why? <laughs> I'm not sure where you're gonna go with this one, but I'm a little nervous. Traveling is a lot like dating and well, I should preface this by saying I don't really have much of a dating history. Good. Answer. Luckily, luckily I found my Answer. bride at a very young age. We started dating when I was uh, eight, Six. <laughs> 18 or 19. And you were how old? Older than 18 or 19. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you're traveling, you're, you're just going, you're trying out new cities. You're trying out different places and you're going to like some of them. You're going to love some of them. A yeah. lot of them, they're just a weekend fling. You enjoy them. You like it. It's, it's fun. But... <laughs> It's not the kind of place you want to settle down at. It's it's not the place you want to be at forever. And yeah. we've been to a lot of those places. Yeah. We've traveled around. We've gotten around. <laughs> we've been around in our day. You have? <laughs> the There's world. A, there are a lot of places that, that are great to visit. There's a lot of places that are great to go for the weekend yeah. or maybe even a month. The feeling I get in Krakow is the same feeling I got when I met my bride. It's just a feeling when you know, you know, and that yeah. there's something special about this person. There's something special about this place. It really does have, and look at this. Does, that, does this place not have a magic about it? There's just people strolling around on, on bicycles. It's so clean. It's so, uh, just yeah. a perfect combination of a big city with a small town feel. Yeah. The people are not like big city people. No, that's something that I thought is just totally different. I just expected, Look, we don't speak Polish at all. <laughs> and I feel like that could be frustrating yeah. for Polish people just trying to go to work, just trying to service food and hear these yoo-hoos. <laughs> okay. And people have been kind and patient yeah. and good Polish teachers. How do you say poppy seed? It's mac. Mac. Yes. Mac. mac. And I did not expect that in a big city. To Poland, I think uh, I think we're on to something here. I think we're I think we're about to take the next the next step in our relationship. I if think that's I'm okay in love. with you. <laughs> I messed you up. Poland is not what we expected. But what does this mean for you? Why should you care? I think we all go into experiences or travels with some level of expectations. And like I said earlier, I think that's normal. We all have expectations and extremely high expectations for different places across the world, like Paris and Rome. And those expectations are super, super high for all of us. 
But what we hope this video encourages you to do and maybe even serves as a little tiny slice of inspiration is that you think outside the box, that you research places that maybe are just outside your comfort zone, that you can broaden the horizon of your mind to think about some places that aren't set with such expectations across the world. And who knows, maybe if you're lucky enough, one day you might end up here in Krakow, Poland. I almost hit that girl. We can't look at pigeons the same anymore. In Querétaro, Mexico, uh, very, very sunny. In Mexico, we are walking with Hillary's parents. It's yep. all four of us. We just got out of breakfast. There's a little plaza there, much like yeah. this one. There's pigeons yeah. early in the morning, and we see and hear commotion. I see a yeah. pigeon, there's two guys, and then there's a pigeon fluttering on the ground. He's kind of like flopping. He's flopping, dying, or something happened to yeah. him. And then we notice that the guy runs over, picks up the pigeon, yes. like picks him up like a football, and then starts running towards his car. And then I noticed that the other guy, his uh, compadre, yeah. has like a whole bag full of pigeons or net full or something yeah. in the car. So these guys have, I don't know, 50 or more pigeons with them. Yeah. They get in the car. and The running car. The running car. The car is running. They get in the car and hit the freaking accelerator, hit the gas pedal to the metal, pedal to the metal. What is yeah. it? Yeah, like they just like robbed a bank they, yes they sped away like they had just robbed a bank and they stole pigeons and the four of us stood there and stared at it like i would like to think i would do something if i saw an abduction but like we all saw it and we were all just like so shocked and it was the strangest by I far to think pigeons were gross but now i just like love them like they have to deal with like dangerous streets you know by far the strangest thing we have ever yeah. seen I think in our entire lives, we all four just stood there with our jaws like, <laughs> like yeah. is, did we, re it was so far out of the expectation. Speaking of expectations versus reality, <laughs> we did not expect that. Also, I mean, like, they're just trying to have a pigeon party. It's a Polish pigeon party. Okay. You stay here with the pigeons. Hey, will be here? <laughs> Anybody still there? This uh, we wanted to have like a little little message, if you will, for all of our our diehard Kinetic Kennens fans, the fans, viewers, subscribers, amigos that have been following us for a while and that have really gotten something from these videos. So if you're just kind of like a casual viewer and you happen to watch at this point, mess I don't know, just go to the next video. This message probably isn't for you. Okay, now, now that we all have the uh, diehard amigos in the room, we've been struggling for a bit lately, and, and we need your help. We share a common enemy, the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> the YouTube algorithm is our common enemy, and here's why. I feel like what we've seen lately on YouTube, what's trending on YouTube, what people are talking about on YouTube, what's probably coming up on your feed on YouTube is a lot of very extreme stunts, to put it lightly. They're just stunts, just like silly. YouTube is in a place where creators feel like not they can't just go on an adventure, go travel, and share that story. They have to like up the ante to some ridiculous level and like carry around a piece of fruit with them while they do it to like somehow make that a bigger thing than it really is. So, with all that said, we've been struggling lately because we don't know where we fit in with where YouTube is going. We want to do big adventures. We want to like, I want to run a hundred mile race some. That's soon, that's a pretty big adventure. But for the most part, we just want to share stories about our travels, the places we go to, the people we meet, the adventures we have. And inherently, most of those adventures aren't going to be these like wild, crazy, epic, Mr. Beast style adventures. They're gonna be hopefully good stories, hopefully good adventures, but just real adventures by real people, not like a staged stunt. But it's difficult to make a career, make a living, if you will, doing that on YouTube now. What we wanna do, what we propose to you, and what we've struggled with is we've kind of moved towards filming slash 
publishing less videos on YouTube, probably an average of like two a week. We want to get back to our roots. We want to get back to how Kinetic Cannon started. And that was with daily, and we can't go back to daily because that just wrecked our mental health. But we do want to film more, and we do want to share more with you because what we have seen is I just feel like we can connect with you more the more that we're publishing. And the more that we're filming, I feel like the deeper connection we can build with you and really the better we can be on camera and the better videos and better stories we can tell in these videos. So if, if, you're, if, you're, if you like that, if that's something you're interested in, if you want the big crazy videos, I don't know. That's not the direction I don't think we're gonna go in. We just wanna share everyday stories by everyday people, maybe not necessarily in everyday places because we're in a different place every day, but in interesting places. If that's something you want to see, we need your help. I didn't consult with my business partner on this. We need you to join what we are now dubbing our Algorithm Beater Club, ABC. I just made that up on the spot. That's pretty good. <laughs> join ABC. <laughs> we need, we, it, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> You're getting value from these videos. If you love what we're doing and you love what we stand for, the best way to ensure that we can continue to make these videos and really make even more than we have been making over the last year is to join our Patreon community, our ABC club, the Algorithm Beater Club, patreon.com slash kinetic cannons. Join our Patreon community. That is the most direct way to ensure that we can we can continue to make these videos. We can continue to share these stories. We can continue to, to show you the world. Also, we've set up a few fun perks over at patreon.com so that it's not, this isn't a donation. You are getting something out of this. You're getting behind the scenes content, never before seen content, stuff that does not go on uh, YouTube in a published video is what you will be able to see. More importantly, you will become a driving force behind this channel to ensure that no matter what the YouTube algorithm is pushing, no matter what silly stuff it's it's trying to make trending at the time, that people like us can just share real stories. And again, if that's something that resonates with you, please join our Patreon community, our ABC club, our algorithm beater club over at patreon.com slash kinetic kinetics. Thank you so much for, for sitting through that with me. You all are our diehard fans, and we love and appreciate every single one of you. Thank you.